Okay, so I just wanted to do a quick little video on left hand attack. And one thing I've noticed with students this week is, some of them, is that they are having some difficulties and slight deficiencies in technique, let's say, specifically related to their left hand technique. Now, there is a very common problem for like developing guitarists where they have a tendency to over rely on their picking hand. You know, I've taught people um, and then I show them it's possible to, you know, legato things, for example, or one handed and they sort of, they are kind of astounded because they, they never realized that you don't need to pick every single note. That's the thing. And so furthermore, a lot of your, the quality of your sound actually comes from your left hand. There are techniques like hybrid picking and stuff, which do relate to, you know, like to, they do relate to the tone of the instrument and what you, you know, the thing sounds you can produce on it very specifically from the right hand. But let's say alternate picking is another one of those, but like things like legato and generally anything you play will, the technique of your left hand, its attack and its ability to do reliable pull-offs and hammer-ons with good quality is what is going to give you that tone. Like if you have a look, uh, so open another tab right now, look up a guitarist that has very good technique and is known for, you know, the quality of their playing, Guthrie Govan or somebody like you know, Matt Schofield. I was looking up a video of him playing blues the other day and I was kind of astounded by just how good his tone was for playing these blues licks, of, you know. So it's it all comes down to that. What I'd say for this video, I'm gonna show you like a few of these left hand exercises I tend to warm up with and just practice my hammer on and pull offs with to improve my finger tone. So for that specific purpose. Now, as I said, I might have said already the right hand will not be involved at all so place it somewhere out of the way where it's not going to interfere you might your, your attention might drift and you might move it back because you're so used to you know using your hands at once but we are only going to be practicing left hand technique so on your knee here anywhere where it's not going to interfere and then every exercise i show you this is basically every uh, approximately every movement you're going to make on the instrument and then i will be starting from the fifth fret E string. So here, take my fingers out of the way. Okay, so exercise one is I've showed this in other videos, but it's basically just the ham the spider exercise going up with hammer ons and then down with pull offs. It goes like this. So like that. Now we're going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and frets five, six, seven, eight. And then we're going back down with pull offs. So eight, seven, six, five, eight, seven, six, five. Now the main thing is do not aim for speed. I'm going to show you a bunch of these, and then you want to be looking at quality over anything else. We go basically if you need to, and you need to get your hammer on strength up which is something that some of you really do need to practice because I've noticed that you're kind of struggling with either the technique or your tone doesn't quite sound as good as it could. Now, and so what I'm gonna help you to do here is just engage your four fingers, get them strong, get them coordinated and really add to the tone quality of your playing. So that's the first one. And then every other one I show you in this next section will be a variation on that. We're basically doing hammer-ons, ascending and then pull offs descending so that's the using these four fingers we'll go over wider intervals a little later on and then we'll do some three note per string pentatonic stuff so as i've uh currently been focusing on that sort of thing with a few of you now now what this involves is we start with the one one to four that's the one i warm up with you know in the morning when i'm getting ready for lessons and practice for myself, whatever. So that one, I get to the top and I come back down. So I do it forwards and backwards symmetrically. The next one, I'm gonna go one to two. So this is frets five and six. Again, do this slowly and aim for quality over quantity. 
Do not aim for speed, speed will come. That's not a helpful way to practice. Guthrie Govan, in fact, has a saying about this. Speed is just the result of good, slow practice. So take that into account and just be patient because I'm not expecting you to be, you know, a shredder from day one. This takes time. So just slowly hearing every note and trying to think, is it, do I get like, see, I got two notes there and I should have really been muting. Probably because I was talking at the same time, but you get the idea. Going slowly through it with a fine tooth comb. See, I clipped one of the strings there, but it wasn't too bad. That's the kind of thing I'm saying. I'm just going over these exercises and I'm looking for the little imperfections to really like clean up my technique and everything. Now that's like, that's one of them. I go up five to six, I come down six to five. The next one is five to seven. Same pattern. And then five to eight. Now this one you might struggle with if your pinky has some strength issues and then rest assured that will be sorted very soon if you practice these diligently. So I still have a little bit of a problem keeping these clean, you know, but you know, it's one, it's an ongoing process. So it's just, it's a coordination thing. Now, the basically there's a lot of variations here but those are the main ones and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna try like with three note per string exercises if I involve three fingers now I can kind of I can go up and down like this now the rest like these are very out of tune the rest of these but they do work they are very unmusical but if you stick with it they're very useful so because it's kind of approximations of scales you know you change position as you go up and down and this is just designed specifically to get the relationship between you know uh, random combinations of your fingers working well like a team of four with the thumb as the manager i use that one in lessons quite a lot as you know if you're a student of mine so basically the three note per string on the first one would be like uh, frets wise wise five six and eight So the same deal, I go up with hammer-ons and then down with pull-offs. And then there's this variation I like to do with the spider as well, where I double back one note at a time. Sort of like the shredding exercise is going to break my rule for a second and involve my picking hand. But the when you're practicing those alternate picking type runs where you're going, you know, Paul Gilberty type stuff. That kind of thing. These are useful for that and just for getting the relationship between your fingers specifically much stronger and more coordinated. Now we do like that. It would be five, six. Now we're still going five, six, eight. So five, six, eight, five, six, eight, five, six, eight. This will tell me which hammer-ons are weak specifically. I might have a pinky problem still. And I get to the top and I reverse that. So, so eight, six, five, eight, six, five. Like that. So just watch that slow section and see if you can follow it along the same pattern so once you've got the pattern down everything else just lines up like a jigsaw piece puzzle now the other variation of that would be five seven eight this one again relies on the pinky so it's more tricky but is very useful and this is the one that i haven't Again, this is the one that I haven't quite gotten to grips with, but it's more or less there. It's just for the sake of strengthening my thinking. I get to the top. It's more a coordination issue than anything. So it's just, once I get to the top, I get, I reverse it. And the 
biggest problem I have right now is the relationship between these two fingers. So just the, I think it's just going to, when I need to make a movement like, like that between these two fingers, that one is quite weak and uncoordinated still, and it's an ongoing thing. Now the next exercise I am going to do is over tones, like full tone gaps. So that would be five, seven, nine. Same pattern. Nope. Hang on, monitor's gone off. Let me just see about this. There we go. Sorry about that. Then. And as you get over these wider gaps, they tend to get much harder. So just like, don't be disheartened if you struggle with this. It's a finger strength thing. This is literally going to the gym for your left hand. So I'm going five, seven, nine, 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 and then nine, seven, five. And then for the hardcore like technique enthusiasts, then you can try the wraparound variation. Now that's a recurring problem I have, which is why I do these exercises. You see how my first finger didn't quite make the hammer on there. So there's these slight imperfections that I'm still ironing out as we speak. So it, you know, it's more or less there, there's no wrong notes, but there's just these technique deficiencies, the issues with the tone, strings ringing together, that's the sort of thing you iron out, so to speak. Now, these are the hardest variations, so this will be familiar to anybody who has done the three note per string pentatonics. So the that pattern going from like five to like eight to ten. Now, if you're really struggling with this, you can move it up to where the frets get a bit narrower, let's say E minor instead. So fret 12. That sort of thing. And then, like, if you're struggling with the stretches, but this E, this is intended to practice the stretches. And then the original shape you would go for in the three-string pentatonic pattern would be... you go up there too but that's not one I, t I tend to end it here when I am playing or when I'm soloing over a backing track or wherever then you're going to take these and you're going to just take the basically the shapes and play them in a linear fashion like this you're going to practice your hammer-ons again very unmusical but very very useful so we're going to go 10 8 5 Now, you might really suffer doing these to begin with, and also make sure that you, you know, pace yourself, because it is very d easy, in fact, to give yourself a strain injury in your wrist. This works your left hand very hard, so do take a quick rest if you get some pain. Now, yeah, that's the first one. The second is when you get to this part of the pentatonic. So we will go 10... Seven five. Now slow this down. And then doing the whole pentatonic and involve my right hand again just for the demonstration purposes is you will get this effect. So you're basically going through a few of these shapes as you play the pentatonic. faster and then you go through a bunch of those shapes those variations as you play so basically focus on all of them and then apart and together and then you will end up with a much much more flexible 
dexterous and powerful left hand that, that will fatten your tone up and make each note sound much juicier, even when you're playing a simple blues lick with your picking hand involved or not. So, yeah, any questions, just let me know. All right. Now, there is also one last one that I wanted to do because I was in, I was learning a Alan Holdsworth lick the other day and I realised just how crazy some of his, like, the demands of his technique are, let's say. Now, this final exercise would be like a weird bastardization over, like, we're going 5 to 10 now, so this will test your stretching ability to the max. And then, as you can see, as you will be able to hear, rather, this is where my, this is the absolute limits of my left-hand ability. So we're gonna go. So five, 10, five, 10, five, 10, five, 10, same pattern, two notes per string. And you can see it's all over the place. This is apps, this is what I'm working on right now because I'm terrible at this one. Now there's a song, um, City Nights, where Alan Holdsworth uses a lick that approximates that kind of shape. It's something like that kind of thing. And then I have it nowhere near playable at this point. So this is why I'm looking at exercises such as this one. So 510, 510. 